Hey everyone, Adam Shari here from Bravura Media Company. Today we're going to be showing you three very, very, very old maps of Ireland. Uh, we're making this video in connection with our YouTube video series on Irish history in tribute to upcoming St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so far in our series, we've done a vintage map of Boston on a video. We have a video on a vintage map of Dublin, Ireland. We have a video of a vintage map of the United States and Irish immigration. And then on St. Patrick's Day, we're going to be drinking some Irish beer. So if you like history, if you like vintage maps, if you like beer, or Irish beer, or like to have a good time, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. We, we upload videos all the time. We love history. And it's just kind of a cool place to hang out and, and a good community. So definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. That being said, let's dive in and uh, let's talk about uh, early Irish history and also look at these vintage maps. We're going to go into the uh, historical aspect first, then we'll explore the vintage maps. Uh, what we know about pre-Christian Ireland comes from references in Roman writings, Irish poetry, myth, and archaeology. The earliest forms of human existence on the island have recently been discovered by archaeologists to be around the 10,500 BC mark. Archaeologists actually found a bare bone with stone engraved markings in the side of it. Uh, some of the most conclusive and confirmed evidence of inhabitants were me Mesolithic hunter-gatherers who arrived sometime after 8,000 BC when the uh, climate started to get warmer and the polar ice caps started to retreat. Uh, the inhabitants remained to be hunter-gatherers up until about 6,000 BC, uh, but it is argued that uh, the, fir the world's first complex agricultural system really started to show um, with the discovery of the Connacht fields. Uh, right, I'm um, moving my mouse, it's right in this region right here, the Connacht, uh, I'm sorry, it's the seed fields in the Connacht region. Uh, and this is the Connacht region. So they started to uh, see uh, development of unique agricultural systems. Uh, this led to the establishment of a high Neolithic culture, and it was characterized by the appearance of pottery, polished stone tools, rectangular wooden houses, and communal uh, megalithic tombs. Uh, what was first a kind of tribal affiliation throughout the island, so you had all these different tribes scattered across Ireland, uh, eventually, as you know, changed into a different system, I, I guess a system of kingdoms. And there's th multiple different elements that had influence on that, ranging from Vikings and Christianity. Uh, to, to take a couple step backs uh, from that, a couple step back from that perspective, um, they were actually Irish pirates. I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, indigenous Irish pirates. And uh, they attacked the coast of Western Britain in the same way that the Vikings would later attack Ireland. Uh, so they, they were, this is interesting, they were invading uh, parts of Britain before the Vikings. Uh, some of the pirates, in a sense, even found new kingdoms, uh, which included Pictland um, and sections of Cornwall, Wales, and I want to pronounce this right, Cum Cumbria. And so essentially all these Irish pirates were going over to Britain and just kind of putting down a flag and saying, let's start a kingdom here. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That is probably pretty unknown. Um, so it's all, these pirates eventually had to make their way back to Ireland uh, to come back to their families. Uh, and I thought that was kind of interesting because when they came back, and this is just very symbolic of what happened with Vikings, uh, they brought back with them merchants, slaves, and missionaries from Britain, okay? And at that point, I mean, archaeologists are having a hard time with, with this because you have the tradition of St. Patrick. Um, so these Irish pirates were, were coming back. They believed that some elements of Christianity uh, were essentially being reinforced in the area before St. Patrick. Um, as you know, St. Patrick came to to Ireland in uh, 432 AD. 
the pirates were going back and forth before this time. So this is where it gets kind of cool, and we're going to be talking about St. Patrick more specifically. So as, you, as we all know, uh, historical tradition maintains that in 432 AD, as we said before, St. Patrick arrived in Ireland and in the years following worked to convert the Irish to Christianity. Uh, because of this, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day on March 17th, which is his actual supposed date of death. Um, 432 AD, though, as we said before, is not is not the first time St. Patrick had arrived in Ireland. He and in 432 he had not arrived in Ireland. That wasn't his first time. That wasn't his first rodeo. According to the Confessio of Patrick, when he was 16, he was captured by Irish pirates from his home in Britain. So he was taken from Britain. As a, and he was a slave, and he uh, was actually looking after animals on a farm where he lived for six years before escaping to, to go back to his family in Britain. He actually escaped. He eventually became a cleric. He returned to northern, north and western Ireland, and then he started converting the pagan Irish to Christians. I think that's fascinating about the Irish pirates essentially um, going back between Britain and Ireland and essentially taking elements of Christianity. I mean, that was that, those Irish pirates going over to Britain really cr created uh, Christi really reinforced Christianity into uh, Ireland. So I, I think that was pretty cool. Uh, very cool little background into St. Patrick. I might do another video on St. Patrick. I need to go into more depth than that. Um, so after that, uh, uh, after he started, St. Patrick started converting uh, all these pagans uh, to Christianity. He became a patron saint of Ireland um, because, yeah, because he essentially converted Celtic polytheism to Christianity. As we said, pagan. Uh, the pagans in Ireland to Christianity. So um, let's dive into these maps. Uh, this one, as we said, was a map of Ireland uh, produced in the 1600s, but the terms on it are quite, quite interesting. So this was created in the 1600s, but the terms actually come from a Greek geographer, Ptolemy. Uh, he's also a writer. He was born in uh, 100 AD, in, uh, and he actually lived in Alexandria, Egypt. But he came out with these geographical terms, and I looked up a couple of these. We see Erdini in the northern section of Ireland, and uh, that term actually uh, references northwest Ireland. Uh, I saw Cor Corondi, and uh, they they reference Ptolemy, uh, his the the Greek geographer actually references as southern Leinster. And Brig Brigantes. Uh, this was kind of interesting. Uh, it's a Celtic tribe with mixed British origins and possibly Roman ties. Uh, so during during the Roman Empire, you you obviously had uh, Roman influence on Britain. It, this is kind of a blending of multiple cultures in this area. I thought that was very fascinating. Very very fascinating. Um, but I mean, this this map is extremely old. Uh, and obviously the terms are very, very different. So I, I, I just wanted to show you this map. Let's move on to another. This one is a 1592 map of Ireland. And we can see these. Remember we talked about the Connacht region, the farming? Remember we were talking about uh, advanced complex farming? Right here, it was, it's this region right here that really saw what archaeologists believe to be a, a very unique and complex agricultural system. And I, I like, uh, we zoom in a little bit, we can see Dublin labeled right here, D-U-B-L-Y-N, very different spelling from what we have today. And we've got all these different sections labeled. Very beautiful map. I think we also have some kingdoms and some towns labeled. We can see this drawing right here. 
We didn't see family names. I mean, if you look around here, Connor. I mean, Connell and Connor. We can see some family names in the area. Carty. Oh, Carty. So the map, the, the resolution is not that big. We can see Kilkenny. Uh, Kilkenny is a pretty big uh, city in Ireland today. It, look how it's spelled. K-Y-L. Kenny right there. So, I mean, just, it's, I love these maps. These maps are great. Um, let's move on to our final one. This one is a 1606 map of Ireland. I think we can get some really, I mean, we can really zoom in and get some great stuff in here. Here's Dublin. Look at, this is a 16, 1606 map. We've got Dublin spelled, the St. Patrick Lund. We can see, look at these, the illustration of towns and you have settlements and cities. Absolutely stunning. These are I, these are names. O'Hanley, O O'Magram. These these are family names. Beautiful. It's, uh, what's interesting about the uh, the Connacht Connacht region right here? I mean, the availability. We talked about the advanced. Uh, agriculture. I mean, look how many inways and streams and and plethora of irrigation irrigational methods in this area. I mean, very vast. I mean, you had uh, a, a major uh, waterway right he, uh, right here, and you had the ocean on the other side. So uh, very conducive to advanced agriculture. I mean. There are so many names. Look, Clan Orugdun. Unbelievable. They crammed all this information on it. This is unbelievable. I can't. There's so many names. Condon. Look at that. Let's see if we can find Kilkenny. Kilkenny should be... I'm not looking. Dublin's right here. We can see the illustration of Dublin right here. Kilkenny should be right around. We see Waterford right there. Ah, there we are. Kilkenny. Very cool. Beautiful map. Really. I love these maps. Look at some of the artwork on the sides, too. Look at that. Fascinating. So definitely some cool maps. I hope uh, this video has been helpful on the history. Definitely stay tuned to us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do videos like these all the time where we look at history, look at vintage maps. Uh, we're going to be talking about Irish history, history further. Uh, check back with us on St. Patrick's Day. We're going to be drinking some Irish beer. We might even talk about beer history, maybe whiskey history in Ireland. Come on. You, you got you to gotta come to our channel for that. Definitely subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below, like, and I will see you guys soon. All right, take care. All right, bye.